Hey, it's Joel. I'm at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Festival. Thanks to Diamondback and Diamondback Nozzles. They're bringing this quick look at some awesome stuff with Matt Denton to you. They're your neighbors, too, right? They are my very good neighbors right over here, yep. I love it. Like I said, this is Matt Denton. Hey, man. Hey, Joel. Oh, hey, it's hey, good to shake your hand. Today, we get to talk about some awesome things because Matt is well known for a number of them. Star Wars comes to mind. Done, I have done a bit of Star Wars. Large Lego comes to mind. I have done a little bit of large Lego in my lifetime. That is a large Lego. Yep. And this monstrosity, this wonderful patented yeah, I, have, I have a couple of patents on this. Yeah, well, one patent covering a couple of aspects, yes. I think you're kind of well known for BB-8, right? I am, yes, amongst other things. BB-8 was kind of my main um, character, let's say, but I've touched a lot of characters in the Star Wars universe because uh, I do all the electronics and software for the Creature Effects Department, Neil Scanlon's Creature Effects Department. Anything that has electronics in it comes past my desk. And we have done hundreds and hundreds of characters. You have a lot to do. I do have a lot to do, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm pretty much the only person in our department that does that. So it's great fun. And But BB-8 was a standout character. And I got Absolutely. to play with it and perform it and do all the live events and stuff. So yeah, it was good fun. I think what a lot of us know is the large Lego builds that you yes. did with your kid. Yeah, so I, I built this go-kart and the other Lego builds with Ruben in mind, but of course I built it big enough for me as well. I, I even have to make it bigger because I couldn't quite fit on it, so I extended the wheelbase a bit. And then I made it more powerful because I'm heavier than him. A lot more powerful. A lot than more powerful. Yeah. yeah, so now, in fact, since you rode it last time at Formnex, this now does mm. 0 to 30 in three seconds. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's ridiculously fast and terrifying. You cannot do anything in a small no, space you can't, like this. No, you, would, you just hit you would run so into fast. things. Yeah. One of the interesting things that really comes to mind for this mm -hmm. is how you incorporated large Lego and consumer level additive machines. Mm -hmm. I had my open RCF1 project, yep. really big, printed yep. it on like Ender 3 level machines, yes. Ultimaker machines. And so you demonstrated really cool ways of splitting up the Lego and rejoining them, especially right. for something that's going to hold yeah. Full Joel style body weight. Yeah. What is your background as far as that level of engineering? All of these were printed on Lulzbot machines. So I had uh, TAS sixes and workhorses, and, and so the bed size was 300, 280 square, I can't remember now. It was about 300. Yeah. 280, 300, something yeah, like that. It worked out I could fit on the largest part was actually uh, an eight by two plate. That was it. So that's where the five times scale came from originally. Oh, interesting, okay. But diagonally across the bed, that was the biggest part I could do. But when I got to the go-kart, I had to go up to 8.3 times scale to make it big enough for someone to sit on and the bearing size matched to 8.33 recurring. So oh, it, was a, it was a 40 see, mil bearing. See, yeah. So then I had to go, well, what size will fit on the bed? And it was a one by four brick diagonally across my bed. And then I had to devise ways of joining them together that, and what I ended up with was like, I split the brick down the middle of the hole, so where a hole would usually be, I'd go right, straight down the right. middle. Yeah. And then I put like these little pegs that clip in and they glue and then they kind of pull it all together. So it was actually worked out really nicely and it held up. The thing that really boggles my mind on mm. this is that you're printed plastic the whole way through. Like right. it's not it's not an under, a wooden undercarriage or no. some sort of steel frame. No. no. And I've sat on it. Like yeah. I, I rode this around Form yeah. Next in Germany. It's fully 3D printed. I mean, there is obviously a metal axle across the back, which right. takes a lot of your weight. I mean, it does flex, you know, you saw it flex. It definitely <laughs> flexed. You saw it, it definitely flex. had a little bit of give, but, but it didn't break. No, it doesn't break, exactly. And it's all PLA. Apart from that, actually, the PLA, um, it's Polymaker PLA Max or Polymax PLA. Oh, the Polymax, yeah. Yeah, Good and then um, the only bit that's not PLA, also TPU tires, mm -hmm. TPU 95, and then Polymax uh, polycarbonate axles. Oh, really? Yeah, solid, okay. printed solid. <laughs> the front axles are PC, yeah, it's unbelievable, and they are so tough. Wait, so the, the back axle is a big piece of steel. Yeah. But the front axles are actually 3D printed, 3D printed. as well. But when you're doing 30 miles an hour on it and the steering is so shonky, it gets <laughs> kind of interesting, I can tell you now. So yeah. then we've, we've got large Lego, mm -hmm. and this is amazing in itself, these builds that you've done with your nephew. But then yep. we move over to this. The, uh, the air mobility system slash jetpack, jetpack, yeah. Is this going to fly someday? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, this is a serious business. This is, you know, myself and a business partner set this company up, Maverick Aviation, uh, about two years ago, just over two years ago. I've done about eight months of work on this, I guess, in the two-year period. It looks really polished. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, it's supposed to, I hope. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is still a kind of a, a prototype uh, or a concept demonstration model, let's say. Okay. 
but it is an exact copy of the real thing that I've built in a physics environment. When you get to flying this size one and you're firing up jet engines that run on jet A1 fuel, you're burning three litres of fuel a minute. A minute? Yeah, and 130 decibels of noise, <laughs> exhaust gases of 700 degrees, you know, so it's a big step to go it from is. electric like test drones to a full system where you're burning that much fuel. And e each of these uh, turbines, these will push out 300 newtons of thrust, which is phenomenal. <laughs> so 180 kilos of lift in total. Uh, but you, know, you want a bit of headroom on that, so. Yeah, that makes sense. This is a demonstration of what is successfully tested in simulation, in simulation right? correct, yes. How yes. much weight has it listed in, lifted in simulation? Um, I, I simulate myself, I'm like 80 kilos. Yeah? So I just put myself in the simulation. No problem. Me. Yeah, it's fine, yeah, it's, it's, it works really nicely. I think about up to 95 kilos, I think I put the weight limit on this to give you a little bit of headroom on stuff. Yeah. But the mid engines, so there's supposed to be two 300 Newton engines here, but you can get a 400 or 500. So you just change the mid engines and the outer oh, engines. Oh, these are, the are responsible for your vertical, but, and then well, these they, are all responsible for. They all lift, but you can just get more boost out of those middle ones, so you don't have to re engineer any of this. You leave these corner ones, which are the vectoring nozzles. Oh, and then so you these can are just, just fixed. Okay. Yeah, so can nice. you talk about generally uh, what it yeah. was that was patented? Yeah, sure. So basically, um, you'll see that there's only one axis of movement yeah. on here. Now, usually you would have pitch and roll nozzles uh, to, to give you a good stabilization. When I built the first model, we had pitch and roll on every corner, which is quite complicated because you have a gimbal that comes around, you have another servo and an offset axis. A lot more parts. A lot more parts. And we built it and it flew, it flew well. And then I was like, I wonder if you can get rid of one axis and turn them at 45 degrees so they roll in and out and you're still changing the thrust. And I figured out how to get pitch and roll out of it, but we couldn't figure out how to get yaw because you're losing oh. the ability to do this with right. the vectors. And, However, the, my pattern of the thing is I have got one axis and I maintained yours. So, oh. yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's the, cool. That's the, that's, the, that's the cool bit. So we got rid of half the complexity, half the weight, and we managed to t maintain pitch roll and yaw with a single axis of... Uh, that's yeah. kind of cool. Ultimately, we want to create a, work, a fully working prototype, a flying prototype. The thing about these is probably, you've got to think about the, the person is a payload. So actually, there's more interest in heavy lift drones. So if you get rid of the payload oh. as a person and say we can lift 100 kilos or 200 kilos as a heavy lift drone, there's a lot of interest in that. To us, the, the goal would be to get this working, but now we have a patent and um, get a working prototype and then maybe hand it over to someone else, some bigger boys to take it on, uh, take it into okay, production. Because okay. it's such a, you know, such a huge thing to get it into a commercial space. Oh, I would imagine so. So I'd rather just do the, you know, the R&D crack the nut and then pass it over well, and, then, really, and then walk away. That's kind of what you love to do, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, the, the, the fun bit's in the design. So. Are you gonna build it out of Lego someday? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I did have one more question yep. though. Uh, I know we're at a Rep Rap Festival, but it looks like it's got a harness, we got a table. Mm -hmm. Could I become a payload? We could We could try and get you in there, yeah. I yeah? mean, yeah, sure, let's, let's give it a go. Look oh. at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, and it can deliver all the Amazon packages yeah. you want. Put it in like that, if we okay. can. Okay. You got it? Oh, it's not bad. No. So you're missing two engines and all the fuel. Sure. <laughs> so now I'm going to... Uh, there we go. Well, I'm just going to press this. This is just in like a little demo mode at the moment. But you okay, can see so it's not going to hit 130 decibels, right? No. no, no, no. So it's just showing you the vectors, how they work. So that would be forwards. Is this printed? So it's 3D printed. Sweet. This is PA12CF, Polymakers Materials, okay. lovely. Okay. So you have pitch, your roll, and that would be altitude gain. Oh. So it's kind of in full manual mode right now. Usually you'd have a flight control system, but it's like full manual. But I mean, that's... And you can whip those around as well. You can see how fast they move. The controls are really a, a, a very fine yeah. touch to it. Yeah, yeah. If this is in the air, mm -hmm. is there a lot of rattle or is it a pretty su no, it sustained No, it shouldn't be. It's good because you're effectively, you're just sat on a cushion of air. I didn't even think about yeah. that, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it shouldn't be, it should be quite a, a, a gentle ride, to be honest. I'm kind of geeking out right gonna now. You're going to make like... shh noises and look up. Can I? Okay, ready, yeah. ready? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. This you're has welcome. been an absolute pleasure. It's crazy what 3D printing can do. Large Lego, I'm yeah. sure, in your robotics. Lots of 3D printing, but you're using 3D printing to help get 
payloads mm -hmm. into the air. Absolutely. Want to make sure yep. people know where can they go to find out more about all they the cool can, stuff you do. They can go to youtube.com forward slash Matt Denton or find me on all my social media at Mantis Robot. Listen, if you made this far, it's awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a country you believe in. Build all of the large robotic things. Absolutely. Yeah. There we go. And always, high five. You want one? Ooh, yes. That was good. First high five <laughs> in an air suit. I love it.